Hi, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Today we're going to discuss the squeeze theorem and look at a simple proof using the precise definition of a limit. Based on my earlier videos, I went over the precise definition of a limit and did examples as well as on the squeeze theorem and also an example on it. So just make sure you look at the video links below in the description for these videos. I'm not going to go over too much on the examples and uh, illustrations, but I'm just going to go over the proof of the squeeze theorem using this definition. And basically, just to recap first, if if we're given that f of x is less than g of x and or less than equal to g of x and g of x less than equal to h of x for all x in an open interval, open interval just means that the endpoints are you don't need to include them. Just you can see more on this in a video link below in open and close intervals. And basically, let's say if it contains a ex, this number a except possibly at a, and we're given also limit as x approaches a of f of x if it equals to limit as x approaches h of x. Thus, we have to have the limit as x approaches a of g of x has to equal now to to l and now if this is equal to l yeah so if we're just given uh, these limits equal to each other just put l just easier to write it instead of these all these uh, two right here so basically yeah, to get an idea of this visually this uh, squeezer if we're given let's say this is h of x right here and now if we're given f of x which is always less than it except the limit at let's say a right here is equal to each other so if it's equal to each other it should be something like this it should be touching like that and it's so it's always less than it this is f of x and now if g of x is always in between these two so it should be something like this something just inside it right here and this is g of x right here so then the limit of g of x is x approaches a is going to be well the same as these two right here. So as you can see g of x is squeezed and hence the name squeeze theorem. So now before I get to this I'm just going to go over a just a recap or just before I get to the proof a recap of the precise definition of a limit. And now basically the precise definition of a limit states if, we, if we're given the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals to l then if for every number epsilon which is greater than zero there is a number delta such that well you have the difference between f of x minus l the absolute value of a this difference between these two is always less than this this epsilon which is never greater than zero so it can be really really small whenever you have this x minus a is less than this delta right here i'm not going to go over too much on the illustration of this so just make sure you watch the video link below on precise definition right here so the idea of proving the uh the squeeze theorem, we just have to make it looked like we just have to apply this precise definition in such a way that the squeeze term looks like this right here and I'll explain that f uh, soon. Now before I get to that, well first let's see what we're given. We're given that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l. So if we're given this limit, then the precise definition has to apply and there must be a, a number delta such that f of x minus the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Whenever the absolute value of x minus a is less than, well, delta, we'll call this delta one right here because this is one limit. So we need to find a separate delta one right here because this one's never any number uh, greater than zero. This one, we need to uh, find it right here. So we're given this one for this. And so there has to be a number that exists. And I'll just write that has to exist if this limit is true, but we're given it's true. So then, uh, and also, they we're also given then the limit as x approaches a of, f of, x, of g, uh, h of x actually is equal to l. So once again, we need to have this uh, h of x minus l is less than this epsilon. Whenever epsilon is any number greater than zero, so we'll just write that. Whenever now x minus a is less than, now we're going to have delta 2 right here. So this has to exist. And we'll just put this arrow as well here. So this has to exist for this limit to exist. And now uh, we can actually rearrange these absolute values into an easier form to deal with using just absolute value properties. Uh, you can see a video link below on more on absolute values and their properties. But basically we could write the, rewrite these as well. f of x is now less than this l plus epsilon and this is l minus epsilon. Remember these are the exact same things as the limit as above and I'll illustrate this quickly. If we have just a line right here, if this is l right here and this is l plus this epsilon and right here is l minus this epsilon then the difference between these two is going to be epsilon as well as over here is going to be also epsilon so if you have let's say f of x right here this difference is always less than this uh this epsilon right here 
So this one right here, f of x minus l is always going to be, well, absolute value is always going to be less than this epsilon. And the idea is because if you have fx on this side as well, so it doesn't matter what which side you look at, even if this is fx minus l, this is fx minus l, this is less than it, etc. Et so it's always going to be true. So now that we have this, we could also write the rewrite the other one as l minus this epsilon is less than now h of x, which is less than l plus this epsilon. And now, since we're given yeah, we're given fx uh, less than or equal to g of x, less than or equal to h of, h of x. We're given this, then we could basically write this, starting from the left side of this, l minus epsilon is less than now. Uh, this is going to be less than f of x right there. So write f of x. And now this f of x, we're given that it's less than or equal to g of x. So we'll just write that down. And now g of x less than or equal to h of x. And now we're given this one, right? Oh, well, we found out this one is going to be less than L plus this, yeah, L plus this epsilon right here. So now all we do is look at the center part and the endpoints and put these together. So now we have L minus this epsilon less than uh, G of X. And now this is going to be less than this L plus epsilon right here. Now we're only looking at this less than because it's going to be less than F of X. And, and this is going to be, so this g of x has to be basically greater than it because this it's less than this f of x. And there's no way that it could equal each other. Uh, this and this can't equal each other. And now just basically using the, just the absolute value form, we could write this now as g of x minus l. This means exact same thing as I showed above in that number line is less than this epsilon. So now we just need to find a delta. So, so we just need to find this delta and we could easily just uh, just set it as basically just say let delta equal to now the minimum so we we can find this delta so this delta is the minimum of delta 1 or the lower value of del of uh, between delta 1 and 2 because we have to have these these exist because those limits are given so the limits that are given are are uh, they exist so the, these have to exist based on the precise definition of a limit so if we have this then basically if we have this case x minus a is less than delta then both of these other terms are true let's write this if uh, this is true then these are true x minus a is less than this delta one and x minus a is less than this delta two right here because we set it as the minimum of it so if if it's equal to delta one right here, if it's less than delta one, then this delta one is obviously true and is also going to be true for this one right here. Thus, this is our proof right here. So we've just proved it. We've just we just showed that yeah, we just showed that the, the the difference between g of x minus l is less than this epsilon, which is any number greater than zero. Whenever we have now this delta x minus a is less than delta right here. Thus, we've proved it, and the limit as x towards a of g of x equals to l right here, and this is basically exactly precise definition right here. So this is our proof. Well, that's uh, all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this uh, rather abstract proof. But once you get the idea of the precise definition, uh, this this is becomes really straightforward right here. This is just an abstract definition. It's just a bit confusing, but that's why I make sure you watch my earlier videos on precise definition of a limit. Well, that's all for today. Remember, you can download these notes in the Dropbox link below, and stay tuned for another math easy.